street with your head down low. Only concentrating on what you know. Brother, sister, let me tell you how to change your life. From picking up change to society life. Not that money that'll make you rich. Or the gold, gold dollar that grants a poor man's wish. Only the currency that God supplies and covers up sin and gives eternal life. It's a God thing. I want you to hold them up and let me see them. Somebody get them up high. Wave them around. Let the devil know you are this morning. Amen. amen. And then shout amen. amen. Praise God. Let's go to... Uh, Let's go to Psalms 92. Psalms 92. Going back into the message, knowing who you are in Jesus. Knowing who you are in Jesus. This will be part two. We started this last week. And uh, I want to remind you this morning, I think that song is very fitting for this message this morning. Because that's something we all need to know. We all need to know who we are. Amen. Amen. If we're going to live in triumph, if we're going to live in victory through the Lord Jesus Christ, we must know who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, the, the day we got saved, the day we got born again, we entered into covenant contract with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In other words, we entered into a relationship. And as with, with any contract, with any covenant, you have to know what your rights or your benefits are if you expect to, to, to glean the whole of happiness and benefits of that covenant. And that's what I want us to talk about this morning, uh, who we are. We've got to know who we are. We've got to know who, who, what our benefits are. Because I, I, like I said at, at the beginning of that song this morning, the enemy attacks us through our minds. He tries to tell us just how unworthy we are. Amen. Just how much we don't deserve salvation. He reminds us of our past failures, our past regrets, our past sins. In other words, in other words he tries to suppress, oppress, and depress us. Well, I got news for you. I'm tired of living down to somebody else's expectations for my life. Amen. My Savior says, I can, the Bible says me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You believe that this morning, say amen. amen. And if we're going to live in that victory, if we're going to live in that triumph, we've got to know what our benefits are. You see, the devil wants to keep you oppressed, and he's been doing a pretty good job with some of you by the look of your faces this morning. Amen. He wants to keep you oppressed. He wants to keep you depressed. He does not want you to realize who you really are in Christ Jesus. You see, He wants you to think guttural or lowly thoughts of yourself. He wants you to believe you can't. Amen. But I got news for you this morning, church. Jesus says you can. Amen? Amen. Can somebody Amen. give Him praise in the house of God? And we have to know who we are. We have to know our benefits in Christ Jesus. So if everyone's in Psalms 92, say amen. amen. Go to verse number 1 and stand to your feet out of reverence for the reading of the Word of God. Psalms 92.1 It is good. Somebody say good. good. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Amen. And to sing praises to your name, O Most High. I told you last week, that's something we got to get back to doing as the body of Christ. Even in the bad times, we got to start praising God. Amen. 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 Because God is good. Amen. Amen. All the time. And all the time? All the time. God is good. God is good. Amen. God is good to us all the time. Number two, to the class. To, whoo, I could preach on that word, to class. Amen. Because you know something? We don't declare enough the goodness of God in our life. We don't declare enough His loving kindness in the morning. You know what? As I told you last week, when you get up out of the bed in the morning, some of you get up saying, oh no. <laughs> Hello? Come on now. Some of you get up saying, oh no, when you, you, you should jump up and start saying, oh my God, thank you for your loving kindness today. Amen? Because it's God's grace and God's mercy that's going to see
see you through today. And your faithfulness every night. Before you go to bed, you need to say, God, thank you for just being with me today. Amen. Amen. Thank you for letting me get through another day. Amen. Come on. Oh, now, that, that got home to somebody. And on an instrument of ten strings on the lute and on the heart with harmonious sound, for you, Lord. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. For you, Lord, have made me glad. Where's your happiness today? Amen. Amen. I will triumph. Somebody say, I got a triumph today. I got a triumph. I, got a, I will triumph in the works of your hand. Father God, we thank you today for just you being who you are, the God that brings uh, uh, loving, loving kindness into our life, the God that brings joy into our life, the God that brings faithfulness into our life, the God that watches over us, the God that saves us, the God that protects us, the God that strengthens us, God, the God that heals us, the rock we stand on in the midst of the storm. We praise your holy name this morning, Jesus, and we give you all the glory. And right now, Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit would just take control of this place, take control of these people, take control of me, that you would give us all eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive what you have in store for us. Holy Spirit, use this living and powerful Word of God today to impact our life, to change us, to mold us, and make us into the men, the women, the boys and girls that you wish us to be. And Father God, I just ask you, Lord, to forgive us all where we failed you, Lord. Forgive us of our sins, especially me, God. I just ask you, Lord, to touch me right now. God, to forgive me that I can stand before you above reproach to ask for your mercy and grace. That your words will be my words, your thoughts, my thoughts, your love in my heart, Jesus. That it flows out and touches everyone in the room. Holy Ghost, take control of me. Let the anointing begin to flow right now. And in Jesus' name, we pray and say, we love you, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated. Sit down and give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when we know who we are, that scripture, verse number four, uh, that David, David, the psalmist, he, he expressively, he expressively makes a declarative statement. He said, I will triumph in the works of your hands. See, David knew who he was. David wasn't perfect. But David knew who he was. He knew he was a child of God. Amen? He knew what God could do. He understood the benefits of the covenant he had with the Lord. And that's what we got to do if we're going to walk in triumph, if we're going to walk in victory over the enemy's attacks. How many of you have felt the enemy lying to you this week and, and just coming against you, coming against your family, telling you you can't be healed, telling you you can't do this, telling you you can't do that? I got news for you today. There's nothing impossible with our God today. Can somebody hear the man of God? And we got to know our rights. we got to know our benefits. You know, you, the first thing you got to know, you got to know that you're saved. you got to know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. You can't walk around and say, well, I think I'm saved. Oh, Hello. Amen. Some of you, listen, everybody look right up here. Some of you have been struggling with that. Well, I think I'm saved. Well, I hope I'm saved. Well, I hope I've been forgiven. I think I've been. No, you got to know. you got to know that you've been born again to the blood of the Lamb shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of your sin. you got to know that Jesus died for you, that He was buried, and then He rose on the third day. And because of your confession of faith in Him, you are now a child of the Most High Living God. Because you have committed all authority and care of and, and care to Him, He is now your Savior. Amen. Can somebody give Him praise in the house of God? you got to know it today. you got to know it today. And when you know that and you know you've repented of your sin, how do you know when you've repented? How do you know when you've repented? Because, but listen, that's just not feeling saying I'm sorry. Hello? I can walk up to Patrick and just pop him upside the head this morning and turn around and say, Brother, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> and he forgive me and he turn around and do it right again. Amen? Amen. But by then he probably done picked up a stick and I won't ever do it again. Amen? Amen. But, but, but repentance is not just feeling sorry for something you've done. Amen. 
Because you can feel, listen, listen, you can feel sorry and turn around and do the same thing again. Repentance, repentance is a complete change of mind, heart, attitude, and character in your life. Amen? See, when you repent, Jesus changes you. Amen? You're no longer what you were. You are now a child of God. You know, if any man or woman be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You can't do the things you used to do. Because you repented. you got to know you repented of your sin. If you surrendered all authority, control, and care of your life to Jesus, a lot of people don't get that. They think the only thing you got to do is believe something. Now, some, some of y'all are going to disagree with me, but I'm going to tell you the truth right now. Even the demons in hell believe in tremor. Amen. Having faith in Jesus Christ goes beyond just believing something. Amen? It is a commitment. It is a yielding. It is giving Him all authority, control, and care of your life. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. You let Him have control. You're no longer in control of your life. He is. If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Can somebody hear me? Amen. You got to make a commitment. Some of you are playing with that commitment. One day you all in for Jesus and the next day you ain't sure. That ain't good English, but I said it anyway. Amen. <laughs> but it's true. A commitment is a lifetime thing. Now, you know, our, our relationship with Jesus is like the relationship between husband and wife. It's forever. Amen. Amen. And if that's not a commitment, that relationship is not going to work. Jesus committed to you. Why don't you commit to Him? Yield yourself to Him this morning. And, I, 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 and what we're going to talk about today is after we've done that, after we know we're saved, after we know we've repented, after we know we've committed to Him, we're going to talk about some of the benefits. And once we understand these things, we're going to be able to face the enemy's attacks more. The first thing we talked about last week was this. You're no longer, you're no longer what you were. Thank Hello? You. Thank you, Lord. You got, you got to change the way you think about yourself. You're no longer what you were. You're no longer a sinner dying and going to hell. But you are now a child of God with all the entitlement that goes along with that position. Hello? And that's standing. You, you come into the family of God. Amen? Amen. And the topic we're going we're gonna to look at this morning is this. You're no longer a lost vagabond. You're no longer a vagrant. You're no longer a beggar. Hello? You, 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 you have an eternal destination through Christ Jesus today. But more than that, you have become an heir to God's kingdom. Can you hear me today? Oh, y'all ain't getting this. Y'all become an heir to the kingdom of God through your relationship with Jesus Christ. You're no longer, you're no longer an outcast. You're no longer an enemy. See, see, before you got saved, you was an enemy. Say, well, preacher, I didn't have an enemy. I wasn't an enemy with God. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Then you just didn't know it. You, you, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You, 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 you wouldn't give God a time of day. Hello? If you'd have been out doing your thing on a Friday or a Saturday night, somebody started to come up and talk to you about Jesus or try to quote Scripture to you, you'd have cussed them out. Amen. That's right. Come on now. That's true. Don't look at me so sanctimonious this morning. You know I'm talking the truth to you. You, you, you curse God's name. You didn't think about him. You didn't have nothing to do with him. And, and bless God, the only time you went to church is because when somebody twisted your arm and drug you in the door. Hello? And the whole time you were there, you had, a, you had a pooch mouth on, amen? You had your lip pooched out before somebody trip over them if they come close to you. Because you didn't want to be there. Why? It, it, it wasn't that you didn't like the people around you. You was under conviction of the Holy Ghost. See, because God wanted you. Amen? You were an enemy. But He wanted you to become an heir. And see, that bothered you. See, because the moment, 
Everybody listen to me say amen. amen. The moment you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the moment you commit yourself to Jesus Christ, receive Him as your Lord and Savior, the moment you know that He died on the cross for you, that He was buried in the tomb and rose on the third day, that moment you become an heir to the kingdom of God. Amen? amen. It says in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. For, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You're no longer what you were. You're no longer bound down in the bondage of sin. Can somebody hear me this morning? You're no longer bound down in the chains of sin. You're no longer in that pit anymore. You are now a child of God. You've been given the spirit of adoption. My God, somebody ought to shout on that. Amen. But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You know, you can now call God Daddy. Amen, that's right. Amen. I was at a revival not long ago, and there was an older gentleman there, been, been saved many years. And he said, well, I can't stand to hear somebody call God Daddy. Why not? Jesus did. He called him Abba, Father. That's what that word Abba means. It's the same thing as that word Daddy. It's a, it's a term of intimacy Amen. with God. See, before you got saved, you couldn't call God that. The, the, the impression I had of God coming up, I was very, raised very legalistically. I'm not going to call the denomination. But I was raised very legalistically. You had to do this, and you had to do that, and if you didn't do this, and you didn't do that, God's going to send you to hell. You know, I thought God was some tyrant standing up there uh, on the edge of heaven looking down at earth at me with a lightning bolt in his hand, waiting for me to put one little toe over the line so he could throw that lightning bolt, strike me dead, and send me to hell. I, 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 I thought of God as a tyrant, as a dictator, as somebody that wanted to cause me harm. I didn't understand that God loves me. That God wanted to have a relationship with me. That God wanted to be my Abba. Amen. He wanted to be my Heavenly Father. My Heavenly Daddy. And take care of my need if I would just give it all up to Him. I didn't get that. And you know, I did until I was 39 years old. And I realized. God loves me. Amen. And He wants to save me. He wants to have a relationship with me. And it was that moment when I called on His name. I asked Him to forgive me, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I become an heir to the kingdom of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And it was the same for you. Do you understand that? It was the same for you. Amen. You are no longer centered down and going to hell, but a child of God entitled to an inheritance from the kingdom of God through God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. You have not been given the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've been given the spirit of adoption whereby you cry, Abba, the Father. Listen to this, verse 16. The Spirit itself. And I should read the Spirit Himself. Because the Holy Spirit is not an it. If you look that word up in the Greek, and that word that word is translated itself, is also translated Himself. See, 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 the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. None lesser or greater than the other, all equal. We serve a triune God who manifests Himself in those three persons. And right now, He has manifested Himself on this earth, if you are born again believer today, in you as the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of adoption. And the Spirit Himself bears witness with your spirit. Thank you, God. I don't know what people have against the Holy Ghost. I don't know what people have against letting the Holy Spirit have control. Because the Bible says if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill. Listen now. Fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. 
when the Holy Spirit's in control, when He's leading, guiding, and directing, you won't, you, listen, listen, you won't walk in those presumptuous sins. Amen. I like that word presumptuous. It's a $5 word with a $2 meaning. It means sins you know you ought not be doing. Because see, there's sometimes we go to this and we know we ought not be doing it. But we do it anyway. That's called a presumptuous sin. But when the Holy Spirit is in control, when the Holy Spirit is lead guiding and directing, when the Holy Spirit is directing our life, when He has taken over and given control, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That is the Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are now children of the Most High God, heirs and joint heirs with Jesus. Can you hear me today, church? Quit fighting the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Oh, y'all didn't get that. The Bible says quench not the Spirit. The Bible says don't hear him to the Spirit of God. Give him control. Amen? And he'll lead you. Listen, he'll bear witness with you. You, you don't have to die. Amen? You don't have to question because the Holy Spirit will bear witness with your spirit, listen to this, that you now are children of God, heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Galatians 4, 7 says this, Wherefore, thou art no more servant. What I tell you to start of this, you're no longer a vagrant, a vagabond, a, a beggar. You're no longer a servant. You're no longer one groveling in the dirt, Amen. wallowing in the mud. You can now get up and come in the house. Amen. You can now come to God's table and partake. Hello. Amen. I've said this before and I'm going to say it again this morning. When I was a child, I loved to play in the yard. I could build a fort out of anything. Amen. Amen. And, and, and bows and arrows and spears and slingshots, I could do it all. Amen. And love to roll around and get dirty and play all day. Amen. Now, by the end of that day, I wasn't fit to come into Mama's house, amen? Because I'd have dirt and grass and sticks and stems and roly-polies and, and mud everywhere, amen? From the top of my head all the way down to between my toes. But there has never been a time in my life when I was a child that when I started to come in the house that my mama looked at me and said, Oh, you can't come in here. you got to go get cleaned up first. I don't want you messing up my clean house. No, she didn't. You come to that back door, mama bring you in the house. She put you in that tub. She clean you off. She clean you up. She put some new clothes on you, amen, and sit you down at her table to give you what you needed. I got news for you today. God will not turn you away. God will not throw you away. He'll bring you in. He'll clean you up. He'll clean you off. He'll cast your sins away. He'll put a new robe on you and make you something brand new. Can somebody give him praise? in the house of God today. Why? Because we're no longer servants. We're no longer servants, but a son that is a child. That word son translated into Greek means children, means child. You're a child now. And no parent is going to turn their children away. No, no parent is worth their salt. It's going to turn, their, it's, going to, it's not going to see about their children's needs. You are a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ Jesus. So you adopted into the family. Can you hear me? You, and that's better than being a natural born son because, because in, in the days of when, this, when the scripture was written, back in the days of the Roman, an adopted child had just as much right as a natural born child. He was given every benefit. He was given a part of the inheritance just like the natural born child was. But there was one difference between the natural born child and the adopted child. The adopted child could never be disowned. Amen. They could never be thrown out of the house. They could walk away. They could turn their back on their adopted family. But their adopted family could not cast them out. They was a child forever. We are a child forever through our relationship of Jesus Christ through the blood that was applied to our life the day we confessed with our mouth and believed in our heart. We are now children of the Most High God. Can somebody give Him praise in the house of God? 
Ephesians 1, 11, in whom In whom also we have obtained an inheritance through Jesus. We've obtained an inheritance. We've been given a part. Hello, do you understand? It belongs to you now. You're not working for it. There's too many of... Everybody look right up here at the preacher. Everybody look at me and hear me say amen. amen. There's too many of you still trying to earn your inheritance. There's too many of you still trying to earn God's favor. Trying to earn God's grace. You can never earn it. It's freely given. And it must be freely received. Only thing you got to do is put all your trust and faith in Him. Only thing you got to do is give Him control. Amen? You don't have to earn nothing. Because he, he, he gives it freely. In whom also you have attained and had it, being predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things after the counsel of His own will. What does it mean to be predestined? Listen to this. How many of you know God knows everything? Amen. Hello? Amen. One, one person got excited. How many of you know God knows everything? Amen? Amen. God ain't no dummy. And way back yonder before time began, God looked down through the quarters of the future. And He saw each and every person whenever presented with the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, to receive His grace by faith through Jesus Christ, He looked at those people and He predestined them to become children of the Most High God. Amen. Amen. Can you hear me today? Amen. God he knew the night you was going to get saved. He knew the day you was going to get saved. He knew when you was going to give your life to Christ. And He predestined you Amen. to become a child of God. Amen? Amen. And I want, I, want, I want to make this comment before we go on anything else. What is this inheritance? What is our inheritance? You know, everybody talks about it, but, but what is it? Well, you want me to blow, I'm going to tell you what the inheritance is going to blow your minds this morning. You might want to write this down. This is a revelation. What is our inheritance? All that Jesus Christ has to offer you is yours today through your relationship with Jesus Christ. Can somebody give Him praise in the house of God? Amen. Amen. Why? Because you're a child. The next thing I want to talk to you about, you need to understand, everybody needs to understand this this morning. You no longer are under Satan's power. Hallelujah. Hello, Brother Woody got a hold of that right quick. Amen. All of you need to understand is you're no longer under Satan's power. Just because he's tempting, and look, he don't make you do nothing. That's right. Amen. Well, the devil made me do it. Not a devil tempted you, you, your flesh, your desire. It's what made you fall in that temptation. Amen. But see, he knows what buttons to push. Why? Because he's watched you live. Exactly. Amen. Let me tell you something. Satan's just as real as Jesus. He just ain't got the power Jesus has got. Amen. Jesus defeated him on Calvary's cross. Amen. Amen. Right. And the only power he has in your life is the power you give him. Amen. And when you become a child of God, you're no longer under his power. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 2, verses 1 through 5 says this. And you, talking about you, look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about me. And you, he made alive who were dead in trespass and sin. You wasn't alive to God. You was dead. You was dying and going to hell. Do you understand that? You were dead. You stink. I stink. Amen. We were corrupt. Come on now. Bay rum aftershave took, took that smell off of us. Amen. We were stinking, nasty, corruptible dead until Christ come. He's made us alive. Amen. Somebody needs to give a little praise in the house on that. You were dead in trespass and sin in which you once walked according to the prince of the power of the air. That's Satan. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Satan's working in the world right now, church. Amen. Open your eyes. Amen. These people that don't believe in spiritual warfare, 
These people don't believe in Satan and demons. They're, they're blind. Amen. Amen. He's working in this world today. Amen. And He is in control of the children of disobedience. That is, the lost people of this world. They're under His power. Amen. I mean, look at some of the things that's going on. People are calling evil good and good evil. Amen. Amen. They get more upset about somebody killing a lion than they do killing babies. Amen. 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 They, they worry more about whales and people taking the life of unborn children. Exactly. I'm telling you, life begins at conception. You hear what I'm saying now? Amen. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> I'll stand up and preach on that now. Because that ass wrong. That's murder. Yes. Woo. In which you once was according to the prince of the power there, the spirit and our work in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath just as others. Guess what, church? You come out the same pit of sin I did, amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You, you come out the same pit of sin we all are. And we got saved not by our own self. No. Not, not on our own merits. We were saved by the grace of God when we confessed our faith in Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. See, because we were, we, we, just like everybody else, we were under the power of Satan. Amen. We were children of wrath just as the others. But God. Who somebody say, but God. But, God. but if it weren't for God, we'd all be in hell this morning. Amen. 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 But God. Who is rich in mercy. Let me tell you something. You can't talk about God's mercy without talking about God's grace. Amen. Amen. They're, 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 they're two sides of the same coin. You can't have one without the other. Guess what? God is rich in mercy today. He wishes to see no one die and go to hell, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. You hear me this morning? That's why we in the age of grace today. That's why God's being so patient and not destroying this earth. Amen? Amen. And destroying the people. He, he's a gracious God. He's a merciful God. He's a loving God. And He wants all people to come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen? Amen. He's given us an opportunity. Amen. But there is an end to God's mercy and God's grace. Hello? Because judgment's coming. Quicker than we think. The rapture of the church is on the horizon. The seven-year tribulation period is just after. And then God's final judgment on this earth. Can you hear what I'm saying today? Yes. People, we need to wake up. Amen. The world needs to wake up. America needs to wake up. This community needs to wake up. Our churches need to wake up. God is going to pass judgment. He, yes, He's rich in mercy and grace. Because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespass and sin, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. It's time to take advantage of God's grace. Can you Amen. hear what I'm saying today? Amen. And when we confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts the Lord Jesus Christ, that grace is applied to our life. And we're no longer under Satan's power. Acts 26, 18 says, To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Uh, Colossians 1, 12 through 13, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness. Amen. Thank you. From the power of Satan. From the power of sin. We're no longer under that. We're no longer under that oppression anymore. Do you get that today? You know what? You know. Mm -hmm. You don't have to fall to it. I see so many people today, well, I just couldn't help myself. Yeah, you could. You didn't have to. You done it because you wanted to. Nobody forced you. Nobody twisted your arm. I can remember when I was a teenager and I could get in trouble. I'd always try to blame it on my friends. 
And my daddy looked at me and said, if they run and jumped off a cliff, that means you're going to follow them? No, daddy. Well, you didn't have to follow them then. You wanted to, amen? amen. you got to face the consequences. You can't blame it on somebody else. If you were born again, listen, everybody look right here and say amen. amen. If you were born again, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today, you are no longer under the power of Satan. You're no longer under the power of darkness. Hallelujah. You've been set free. Thank you, Jesus. What did that song say? I'll shake off these heavy chains. Wipe away every stain. Because I'm not who I used to be. I've been set free. Amen. Amen. You've been set. Sin, no, sin no longer has dominion over. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Because what's going on? You need to understand this benefit. Sin no longer has dominion over you. You're no longer under the power of Satan. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse number 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. You've overcome him. You've been set free. Amen. You now have the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. The day the blood was applied to your life, sin no longer had dominion over you. And because of your testimony, your confession of faith in Jesus Christ. Hear me. Your confession of faith in Jesus Christ. That's your testimony today. That's your testimony. Your faith in Jesus. Because of your relationship, the grace and mercy has been applied to your life. You no longer have to believe the lies of the enemy. You no longer are chained down and bound down by sin. You've been set free today. You are a child of God, entitled to an inheritance, set free to liberty in Jesus Christ. Can somebody give him praise? got to get that through your thick skull. Amen. <laughs> if I could come unscrew the top of your head and pour it down you, I would. You know, sometimes I train bird dogs for you. And, and when you train bird dogs, it's repetition, 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 repetition. Because see, if they got it in the blood, they got what it takes. You just got to keep going over and over and over it until they get it. Well, I've learned something about children of God. It's about repetition, 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 repetition. You got to keep going over it, amen? Because you know what? They got it in the blood, amen? The day Jesus Christ applied the blood to your life, you got everything you needed, amen? And we just got to keep going over and over and over. We got to keep reassuring ourselves. Paul said this. He said, it's not tedious to me to preach to you the same thing. He said, to you it's profitable. Yes. So church, I'm going to keep grinding it in your head till you get it. Amen. You got the victory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory. You've overcome the enemy. <clears throat> You've overcome sin. You just got to make up your mind and believe that you have it. The benefits of yours. But the first step, everybody listen to the preacher say amen. amen. The first step is making sure that you know that you're saved today. Making sure that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can't doubt it. You can't just think you're a child of God and expect to overcome the enemy. He's going to get you every time. You got to know that you know that you know that you're saved. There can be no doubt in your life. You got to come back. If you, if, you was a, if you know you got saved when you was a child, but you've been living contrary to the Word of God, you need to come back this morning. You need to come back in the right relationship with Jesus Christ. You say, well, preacher, you don't know what I've done. God may not want me back. Yes, He does.
God wants you back. Why? Because God loves you. The Bible says if we'll confess our sins to Him, He is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. You just got to speak the same thing about your sins as God says, and then God's going to welcome you back. When the prodigal son come home, his father didn't lock the gate and bar the door. He run to him. Amen? He'll run to you this morning. The only thing you got to do is call his name. He's waiting. He wants you. Amen? It's up to you. It's your decision. I can't make it for you. I wish I could. I can't. Because it's between you and Jesus this morning. Amen? All heads are bowed. Emotions settled, feelings tried I can't seem to redeem all the tears that I've cried And it seems as if there's really no way home And I've tried to find the strength to carry on I moved back so I wonder why I try to find the ways To turn back the time I find out more and more The reasons for my life The answers feel so far from me I seek the light When the waves wash ashore I feel the sand move away I look down at the footprints that haven't washed away And I feel myself lighter than the air And I see there's more than just my pair There's just one